To understand this story, you have to understand the family. <laughs> the Waters family are not typical. They've chosen to build a life around constant activity and children, lots of them, seven to be exact. And it's how they got that number that is fascinating. Their daughter Corinne was active, like everyone in the family. But at age six, she was bothered by a pain that would not go away. They took her to doctors, several. They all thought that she had a bumped femoral nerve, maybe from her uh, hockey playing. And they said it just needed to heal on its own, that the nerve would grow back, and that we just needed to wait. And we're, we're thankful that we didn't. So eventually, we found a neurologist at, the, uh, at Gillette who discovered that she had a large tumor in her pelvis. That was the beginning of a story that would take more turns and twists of fate and faith. Their precious daughter enduring chemotherapy while her siblings treated her spirits. Well, the kids were great. They really made the best of it, the other kids. Um, they helped Corinne when she didn't want to eat a thing. Brian would make every kind of smoothie he could think of and she'd only eat Brian's smoothies because I was spiking it with protein powder and stuff and she didn't like the, <laughs> the taste of it. And the kids would come to the hospital and they would draw on the windows, you know, you can do it, Corinne. And it was during this time that they realized they were not alone. This was not a journey that involved just family. They were finding out firsthand that they had a foundation of friends that walked side by side. At the time Corinne was diagnosed, the kitchen, uh, I had just torn up the linoleum. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to retile Replace. and we had a friend who just came over and he's a contractor who builds homes and stuff. He says, let my guys take care of this. We'll just come in and finish it. And that, that's just, you know, people came and brought gifts for Corinne and mm -hmm. sent things. People, again, that we didn't, don't know, just sent them. Maybe the sense of reaching out is what is ingrained in this family. That they were committed to the cause. That their faith is bigger than they are. That there is a calling to do the right thing. While Corinne was being treated at the hospital, and they were by her side night and day, and that is when they changed someone else's life. Corinne was diagnosed in August of 06, and um, was getting treatment until through December until her surgery. Victor was diagnosed in December, about mm -hmm. the same time that Corinne had mm -hmm. her surgery at Mayo. Um, his his family situation was kind of up in flux, and so from December until about March. He lived in the hospital. Um, he was placed in foster care, but there wasn't a foster care family to care for him. It, it, we had gotten to know him just in the playroom and in passing, and, and any time we were there, he was alone, wasn't with a parent. Victor had a spirit about him, and when he came into their lives, they came into his, the family would visit the hospital and they'd make sure to take time to connect with him and include him. The next day, Brian and Eric came equipped with two grocery bags full of Legos. And the three of them played for about two and a half hours. And, and Brian was sick, just had a little cold, so he was wearing a mask so that Victor wouldn't get sick. And at the end, uh, Eric and Brian said, Victor, do you want to keep these Legos? And he said, no way, are you serious? What did he say? He it, said, are you kidding? Are you kidding? And they said, no, you can keep them. And Victor said to Brian, take off your mask. <laughs> just wanted to see if he was serious about it. <laughs> when the treatments ended, the Waters family would return to a more normal life at home. There was something that would not leave them. It was the thought of a young boy battling a rare disease on his own, by himself. And the thought that he was doing it alone was another calling. One day Mike said to me, do you ever think about Victor? And I said, yeah, all the time. And uh, he said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And I said, yes, isn't this crazy? This was not something they had to think long about. It was a decision through their faith that had already been made in many respects. But adopting Victor had its barriers. He is a Native American, and it would be a complicated process. We just basically said, look, we know what this disease is. Mm -hmm. um, we know what the treatment is. We know what the future may or may not hold. Who better than us? We've been down this road. We're on the road. 
And so was added to the Waters family, Victor, a family that just seems to energize each other, had a unique situation. Two children who battled the same medical condition at the same time with treatment still ahead. They integrated him into the schedule that is heavy on sports. You see, his new father had played professional baseball, and his mother was part of the University of Michigan field hockey team when they met in college. So the kids, they just kind of find their way onto the field. In our family, uh, it's hard not to be involved in, in, in something, and sports is usually the first choice. And Victor had a new home where he seemed to fit right in. In the summer when we're doing sports, when we're all going in different directions and stuff, it's really rowdy. What does it mean to you to have um, Victor as a brother now? He's on the playlist. And so they played together and tried to get back to a sense of normalcy. Corinne returned to the ice, a part of the hockey team. She's always been, always been huge on the energy, always. We gotta come out firing today. You guys gotta come on and tap that puck. The hockey community here is familiar with her story. They've known the family, and they've known Corinne for a long time. So when she got back on the team, there was a feeling of a friend coming home. We're all a little uh, timid about it, kind of, kind of worried that you know, can't she do it? But she came out like a tiger, and it's been pretty impressive. Mom and family sit in the stands recording their special girl's triumph. Right. You know, I film a lot of what she does because I'm so amazed that she can do what she can do. And uh, sometimes we, we take, you know, clips of the film back when we do our checkups at Mayo Clinic to show the doctors what Corrine can do. I watch and just shake my head and know that we could be in a very different place than we are like with her new brother in the stands, like he's been there his whole life. Tell me about your friendship and relationship with her. I don't know, we like to play cars a lot. In the hospital, we race around in multiple cars. Corinne, like Victor, and to an extent, the entire family, an inspiring part of this team. The other players look at her and say, wow, look at this girl do this. There is uncertainty in the future but they are buoyed by a family that is filled with faith. And they have decided that this is the opportunity to shine brightly through the adversity and to know that this calling is why they live and why they serve. We're part of this story, um, but it's just a small piece of what God's doing in a lot of lives. And we want to be able to share that and say, hey, you know, uh, God is in control of this situation. He's led us down this path and yes it's been hard but he has still um, been faithful throughout and um, it's a good place to be to, to, to rest on, on him being in control. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.